You take your Bibles and keep them open at Acts 2. We will spend a good bit of time there this morning, Acts 2, 42 to 47. It is a beautiful Lord's Day. It's Super Bowl Sunday. Um, I knew uh, that evening service, he would preach twice. Uh, literally. Uh, I guess to test everybody's devotion to God, and I promise I will not do that this morning. Um, I might get an earful on the way home, so I'll be a little better. As a kid, I had some models. Had a few models of airplanes that I would put together. But what I really collected and what I really loved were models of the space shuttle. I was six years old. And Dad woke me up that Sunday morning that John Young and Robert Crippen took off on Columbia the first time. And, and ever since, I was, I, I was hooked on the space program, shuttle, and all that. And... I would have models of all the different orbiters that NASA had. I would take my time and I would sand down the edges after separate. Take care of the towels and, and put them on just carefully and just right. My goal was to make that model look as much like the real space shuttle as I could. And you guys down model kid you'll appreciate this. In here talking about those models I can smell them. The glue, the paint, you, you know what I'm talking about? I don't know if you had models growing up. I many of you did from the reaction. But I'm confident you have models now, if you admit it or not. Just that artificial tree that you put up that's a model of the real one. Maybe it is that train set that goes around the Christmas tree. A birdhouse that looks like a real house or something else. Maybe, just maybe, you still have that Sports Illustrated football that's really a telephone. You, you remember those from 20, 30 years ago? Do you know our models can serve a very real purpose? Very useful purpose. NASA used models of the space shuttle. Oh, not those plastic ones I put together, but Ones that put wind tunnels and what have you to test aerodynamics and so forth. I know some ladies that go into furniture stores and look at the different decorations and how things are put together. They use that furniture store as a model, if you will. When you buy clothes, you may put them on and model them and make sure they're going to fit just right and look okay on you. Models. In the text before us this morning, we have a model. We have a model church. We have a picture of what the church is supposed to look like. How the church is supposed to be. The church of Jerusalem, right after Pentecost, can serve as a model church and guide us today because they had a possible prophets inspired of God to guide them, to help them be what they ought to be. This morning, we're going to think about the model church, how we here can be what God wants us to be. And as we read this text, we're going to understand and remember that God has used models throughout history. Throughout His dealing with man, God has used 
models. As Moses was erecting the tabernacle, God told him in Exodus 25, 40, See that you make them according to the pattern shown you on the mountain, according to the model shown you on the mountain. 1 Peter 2, 21, Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example, a model, that you should follow in his steps. As we look at the Jerusalem church, the model church, we see that a model church is an active church. The church in Jerusalem was active. They weren't sitting around. They weren't waiting for someone else to do the work. They weren't thinking, we pay a preacher, we'll let him do everything. We've got elders, we'll let them do everything. Or Bible class teachers, song, nothing like that. They were active. And this text tells us how early church was and how they were active and in what ways they were active. Acts 2, 42, 47. Those who are added to Pentecost And, and to everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their for daily those who are being saved. Specifically, the early church here in Acts in Jerusalem was involved in Four activities. And four activities I want us to think about, to emphasize this morning. Verse 2 tells us about those activities. They devoted. The, the Greek word devoted means to be persevering, to be attached, to be immovable. The idea really is faithfulness to a spouse. That was the word that was used. Persevere. They devoted. They kept on doing themselves. The apostles teaching. There's activity. Devoting to the apostles teaching. Apostles were instructed to teach. Before Jesus went back to heaven, He told them to go into all the world to make disciples of all the nations. To baptize set up disciples and to teach them to in Jesus' teaching. And thus these apostles are carrying out their mission and teaching church, which is also in the teaching. They're devoting themselves to apostolic teaching, they're paying attention. They're not daydreaming. They're not letting go in one ear, out the other, but they're paying attention. They're doing what the apostles taught them to do. And to fellowship. They devoted themselves to fellowship. This tells how they devoted themselves to fellowship. No. The believers were together. Fellowship. 
They had everything in common. Fellowship. The Greek word means joint participation. It's sharing life together. That's the idea. So property possessions gave to anyone who had need. Fellowship. They met together every day. Fellowship. Fellowship. They praised God. Enjoyed favor with all the people. Fellowship. The Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Fellowship. This text, in their activity, this early church is fellowshipping with each other. They're being together. They're not keeping distance from those who don't look like them. Not keeping their distance from those who think like they do on everything. But they had everything in common. They had the important things in common. They knew whom they served. They knew they were brothers and sisters. Just with each other. They devote themselves to apostolic teaching. To being together. And the breaking of bread. Breaking bread was an idiom in that day and age that meant to eat. And you always have to look at context to know common meal, just, just eating lunch or dinner, or if you're talking about the Lord's Supper, because the same phrase is used to refer to. There are folks who come down on both sides of that question in this text. But personally, I come down on the side of the Lord's Supper. We're talking here about communion. Because, notice verse 42 very carefully. They devote themselves to the apostles. That takes place in the assembly, doesn't it? That's what we're doing this morning. Paying attention to the apostles' teaching. Fellowship, that takes place in the assembly. We fellowship with each other before, after, during. Prayer, that takes place in the assembly. Oh yeah, I understand those things take place outside as well, but they are assembly activities. Therefore, I think it wise for us to think of breaking bread in assembly terms. What we do in the assembly, that is the Lord's Supper. To being with him around his table. Remembering his great sacrifice. To the Lord's Supper. To breaking bread. And to prayer. They were a praying people. The Jews had set time for prayer. And it seemed that idea came over into the church. If you notice in Acts 3, Peter and John are going up the temple at the time of prayer. When it's time for them to pray, they went up to the temple following that Jewish custom, keeping those t set times of prayer throughout the day. We're not commanded to have set times of prayer, but we need to pray just as they devoted themselves to prayer. You see in Acts 2, you have a very active church. They are a model church, an active church. They're active in apostolic teaching, in fellowship, in breaking bread, and in prayer. Let me ask you this. Would you like to be part of a model church? Would you like to be part of a congregation known throughout the community as being the people of God? Would you like to be part of a church that everybody in town wants to be part of? 
So we can be a part of a church that God blesses. That God looks upon you. There is a way of doing that. It's by being an active church. The church is an active church and they're active in four ways. If we want to be a model church, God is pleased with it. in four ways. You need to continue in the apostles' doctrine, their teaching. You understand King James, some translations refer to doctrine here. Didache is the Greek. It is the hearing what the apostles said. You understand, I trust, how important it is to hear the words of the apostles. The words of Scripture are so very important. In Revelation 2 and 3, Jesus would tell the seven churches of Asia, for example, at verse 7 of chapter 2, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Think about that. If you have ears, raise your hand if you don't. Hear what the Spirit says. We need to hear what the Spirit says. We need to hear what the apostles said through the Spirit. Second Timothy 13. His departure is. But yet, what does he tell Timothy? When you come, bring the cloak I left with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially. I don't want to make too. But if I had to guess what those scrolls and parchments are, Scripture. Paul had scrolls, parchments for Scripture, surely. And he tells Timothy, when you come, he's already told him to get here as fast as he can, when you come, bring me my Bible, if you will. I want it. I need it. Here is a man about to have his head cut off. You know what he says? Get me my Bible. I've got more study to do. I've got more activity to do in the Apostles' Doctrine. If an inspired Apostle needed his Bible, my brothers and sisters, how much do we need ours? We need to spend serious time in the Word. If we are to be a model church, we have to continue in the Apostles' doctrine, spend time with the Word. We have Bible study, devotional on Wednesdays. If you can't be here in person, you can watch online. Spend time every day in the book. Know what it says. Well, if I have time to watch TV and to keep up with the news and my sports team and everything else, I've got time spent in the book. Words of life. Let me encourage you this week to read the book of Acts. 
there is the apostles' doctrine. There is the idea of the church. Here's where the church begins, where it grows, where it spreads. If we want to be a model church, look at Acts. Spend time reading that great inspired work. Seeing what God wants His church to be. Commit to continuing in the Apostles' doctrine. But you also need to fellowship. You need to devote yourself to the Apostles' doctrine and to fellowship. Fellowship was so important in the early church. They spent a great deal of time fellowshipping. Acts 4, 32. All the believers were one in heart and mind. Were one in heart and mind. Didn't care about each other's politics, sports. They didn't care about who was the best dressed or the worst dressed or any other such thing. But they were one in heart and mind. They knew what was important. No, they didn't know what was important. They knew who was important. The Lord Jesus. And they were at His feet. They served Him. They honored Him. They were one in heart and mind. Romans 1.12 Paul prays that he and the Romans, may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. They were continuing in fellowship. We need to continue in fellowship. Brothers and sisters, we need to be together. We need to love each other. Spend time with each other. Oh, the worship assembly provides a great place to come and fellowship. I know some of you don't feel comfortable yet, but we clean this place. We follow the CDC guidelines. It's safe. Oh, I wouldn't let my family be here if it weren't. We need to be together. We need to be worshiping our God. Oh, and the assembly is a great place for that fellowship. It's not the only place. But the author of Hebrews tells us to be encouraging one another in the assembly and all the more so as we see the day of the Lord coming. This week, you need a fellowship with a brother or sister. Outside your home. You may be, you pick up the telephone, make a call. Might be, you wrote it, write a note. Might be that you FaceTime. Might be you get together a cup of coffee and stay six feet apart. Whatever. But we need to devote ourselves to fellowship. Sharing our lives together. Spend time and our lives together. The early church devoted themselves to apostolic teaching, to fellowship, and the breaking of bread. A model church will devote themselves to breaking of bread. You need to commit yourself to the Lord's Supper. You see, the breaking of bread, the Lord's Supper, is the very reason the early church came together on the Lord's Day. Brothers and sisters, that's why we're here this morning. We're not here to listen to your awesome new preacher. That wasn't a joke. We didn't come together to pray. We didn't come together to sing. 
We didn't come together to give of our means. That's not why we come together. We come together to break bread. Acts 27, on the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Now, in the context, there's preaching, there's worship as we know it. But that's not why they came together. They came together for the purpose of the Lord's Supper. That's why we come together this morning, brothers and sisters. We assembled for the purpose of the Lord's Supper. Yes, there are other acts of worship, and I don't mean to take away from them. God commands them, therefore they are important. But the reason we assemble on this day is the Lord's Supper. And, and is it not amazing? When you stop and think about it, we assemble on the first day of the week to take bread. What day did Jesus rise from the dead? First day of the week? We come together on the day of His resurrection to remember His death. That's amazing. We go back to the cross on the day that he came back to life and lives forever. We come together. We break bread. And as we break bread, we remember Jesus. We know these words of Paul rather well. I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. In remembrance of me. In remembrance of my body and of my blood. And to be perfectly honest, I think the one who died and gave his body and blood gets to set the parameters of his memorial. And he says, remember me. Don't be thinking about lunch. Don't be looking at what your neighbor is doing. Remember me. When we come to the Lord's table, we have to remember it is His table. It is His supper. We remember Him. We concentrate upon Him. If you want to be a model church, you need to do one more thing. You need to pray. You need to pray. We have got to be a people who spend much time in prayer. Luke 18, 1. I don't care. Look, folks. I call my dad today and say my wife is eat up with cancer. She's about to die. You know what my dad would tell me? Dad, I just lost this, that, or the other. Dad, I'm going through this, that, or the other. You know what my dad's going to tell me? He's going to quote me one verse. And it's right here. And I love him for it. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Show them that they should always pray. No matter what. Should always pray. We have got to be a 
people who always pray. Ephesians 6.18 And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. All kinds of prayers and requests. I can take whatever it is in my life to God in prayer. And He'll hear, hear me. He'll answer in accordance with His will. Oh, the great power of prayer. Because prayer appeals to the one who created the universe. If that ain't power, you tell me what. He has all power. And he can and he will use that power to help me. Now, while I can take all kinds of prayers to God, let me encourage you to do this. This morning, for our purposes, you think about a mild church, let's get really specific with prayer. Let's pray for this church. Pray for me. I can fulfill my ministry. Todd, that he can fulfill his. For our elders, that they can shepherd us as God would have them do. For our deacons. For our Bible class teachers. Let's get down on our knees and pray for this church. God has all power. And He'll bless us. You remember in Acts 4, the disciples are told, you just shut up about this Jesus guy. We don't want to hear any more about this. And so the disciples go back, Peter and John, and, and they report to the others what the Sanhedrin had told them, Oh, they just give up and say, okay, well, that, that, that's that. No. They get on their knees and they pray. And do you remember what happened? The place where they were was shaken. They had an earthquake because they prayed. They went out and preached the word with all boldness. God heard, God answered. That's the same God we pray to, my brothers and sisters. That's the same God who has the power to answer prayer today. Let me tell you what. You need to be more specific than the church as a whole. I want you to pick out a brother or sister. I want you to pray for him, her, night and day. Take the name of someone in this congregation before the Father daily this week. Send a text and note say I'm praying for you. And mean it. God can do great things if we let Him. Let us pray that He will do great things among and let us be a praying people. When this church becomes a model church, imagine what's going to happen in this community. Imagine the glory of God will be brought here. Imagine what people in the community are going to say. There are some movers and shakers up there. They love the Lord. They're doing His will. Oh, I, I, I want to be a part of that. Because they're an active church. They're a model church. Everyone in town and beyond will hear the Word of God. Prayers would go up to our Father night and day. We'd share life together. 
come to the Lord's table with reverence and honor. Know in that model church, the Lord added to their number every day those who are being saved. Yeah, I know the King James says church there. I hate to bust your bubble. That's not in the Greek. Yet that's what he meant, wasn't it? Added to their number, to their group, to the church, those who are being saved. Is it the case this morning that you need to be saved? To be a part of that church, the body of Christ. Saved of your sin, saved from the wrath of God to God. You need to come this morning. Won't you come right now as we stand and sing?